Hello everyone, welcome to the very first episode of the CodeStack podcast. So if you don't know, I'm building a platform, it's called CodeStack, C-O-D-S-T-A-K.com. You can go there and try different front-end challenges. So the website is still in beta, I'm still building it, uh, but you can still try, you can still try different challenges and uh, I'll appreciate if you can give me some feedback as I'm currently building it. I need to know like what I'm doing good and what I need to improve. So if you go to codestack.com, C-O-D-S-T-A-K.com and try a few challenges and just give me a feedback. So let's get started with today's episode. So this is episode one, mastering the use effect hook in React. So if you have worked in React ever, you probably have used this hook, the use effect hook. So you might be using this hook to fetch some data or you might be using this hook to manipulate the data after it renders. So you can do a lot of different things with the use effect hook. So my job here in this episode is to give you more detail like how the use effect hooks work. Uh, and well, because it's just the audio, it's a podcast, I don't have any code. But I was thinking maybe it's better we don't have a code. Then like I can think more of like how conceptually you can understand this hook. Before like we talk about what use effect hook is, let's talk about what an effect is. Because see, it's called use effect. So it's something to do with the effect, right? So before diving into use effect, let's take a step back and understand like what an effect is in the context of React. So in React, an effect represents any task that goes beyond the component rendering. Like that's that's the definition. Like anything you're doing, like let's say you you are rendering something in component, let's say it's a, it's a list of names or whatever, like or you have like different checkboxes or you have a form. Whatever you're doing, if it's outside the component's rendering, maybe you need to fetch some data, right? That's outside the component rendering because you need to fetch the data and then put that data inside your component. So that will be called an effect. And now you'll be thinking, what do you mean by like component rendering? Like what is involved in component rendering? Component rendering involves a uh, few things. So first of all, it reads your props and state. So let's say you're passing some prop, it will read your prop and, and make changes according to your prop or according to your state. Maybe you're using a use state hook or something like that, right? So you are changing the state while it's rendering. Uh, that will be included in the component rendering. And what goes beyond rendering? Those are called effects. And to handle those things, we use this use effect hook and what can be uh, considered as side effect like fetching data updating the dom directly i'm not using the state directly maybe you're doing you're using some refs right so you're updating the dom directly or you are setting up some subscription to websockets or you m might have some timers right those timers run for like after five seconds ten seconds two seconds whatever you put it so those all those things will be considered as side effects. To handle those things, because that comes outside of component rendering, we will be using this hook. And that's why this hook is so important and it does so many things. It might be confusing in the beginning to understand what it does exactly. Maybe you you heard like, oh, you can directly, you can fetch some data, right? So you, you'll be thinking, oh, it just, I can just use it for just fetching data. But someone shows you, oh, you can manipulate the DOM this way using this use effect hook or you can call some timers inside use, use effect hook and you'll be like oh man this is doing a lot of different things and I need to understand like, what exactly this use effect hook does this was like when I started react I was very confused oh man this use effect hook it does so many things so I just start digging start using in the projects or at my job and then I was like oh that's why you would use it okay so we used a word render cycle in our conversation so if you don't know uh, what render cycle is, so the render cycle in React, uh, it refers to the series of steps like React goes through to render and, uh, and update a component. Uh, because see, if state or prop changes, that changes the component, right? So let's say you have a variable x, uh, which has initial value of one, and you have an on-click event handler. So if you click on, let's say, adding a value by one, so it will increase the value by one, but you need to, re-render your component so that it can show you the updated value of x, which is one plus one, two. The whole process, like React, does a whole process in the background, which they call it render cycle. You can like you can break down the render cycle in few steps. So first of all, you have, let's say, the initial steps. Uh, when a component first mounts, so like it appears in the DOM, right? So React renders that component based on its initial state and props. So let's say if x equal to one, so React will take x value one, and on the display, it will show you one value, right? Uh, and when you click on the plus one or minus one uh, button, so let's say you want to increase the value by one, as I was mentioning before, uh, React re-renders based on your changes in props or changes in your state. So if X is the state of your application, if X changes, React will know that something needs to change. What needs to change? 
the value effects so it re-renders your component which like which refreshes at the background and give you a value of two each render react will make sure if there is a use effect you need to run right so let's say you put a condition when x is equal to 10 you need to fetch something from the uh from the back end or from the api right so as you're clicking it one two three and as you approach 10 and as you go to 11 react will know that okay in the use effect you mentioned that if x value is greater than 10 you need to fetch this data and show something maybe you need to show some message some alert or anything like you want to show right so react will know that inside the use effect hook you mentioned so it breaks the cycle get that value update your x value or whatever you're updating and and show you the message so this whole cycle of rendering and re-rendering is called you can call it the render cycle in a use effect hook you probably used it before so you need to pass a value if that value ever changes use effect will rerun so what it will do it will rerun your component so if you pass anything to the dependency array, if that dependency array value changes, your whole use effect will rerun and that will cause a re-render. And what about if you don't pass anything to your dependency array? If you don't pass anything to your dependency array, that's a question for you. What should happen? Uh, see, when you load that component, it will run once, right? Because you have a use effect, even though it doesn't depend on anything, but because rendering the component first time, it will run that use effect once so whatever you do on the page that use effect will not rerun it will only rerun if the dependency value changes if you are not passing any dependency value your use effect will not run it will only run while rendering the first time after that it will not run and this is one of the most common error uh, caused by the dependency array if you miss that or you added too many variables to your dependency array if something changes your application will uh, reload and that will cause performance issues because see you don't want your application to just reload anytime something else change you need to keep keep things in control right so just make sure like you pass you know like what you're passing as a dependency array if you don't pass anything it will only render once so we talked a lot about use effect so let's see what are some of the drawbacks so one of the drawbacks i just mentioned like if you miss a dependency array your functionality might break if you add too many dependency array your functionality your functionality might break so make sure you know what you're passing in your dependency array. Another issue is like it causes re-renders and performance issues as I already talked about. So the third drawback of using use effect hook is like you might have like five, 10 uh, use effect hook in a single component. I know it can happen. You need to do a lot of things on, uh, on, on inside your component, right? So you might have three or five, 10 uh, use effect hook and that will cause some kind of performance issues because see where, when it mounts, it has to like first use effect has to complete and second third and so on right so uh you need to make sure like you know what you're adding inside your use effect hook otherwise you will just have very bad performance issues so another issue you might face while using the use effect hook in the modern react react 18 plus is like use effect won't run on server it will only run on the client on the client component so if you have a server side component that will not run your use effect so you need to find different ways uh, to compensate the use effect hook you might like take the components out of the server side rendering and put in a uh, client side rendering and then maybe take that whole component inside the server side component so you can do different ways uh, we will talk about that in the future uh, episodes but right now just so you know you can't run the use effect hook inside your server components in react 18 and above yeah so i think we have talked a lot about use effect hook uh, what about my personal opinion like what do i think about uh, using it not using it uh, i think uh, for few things use effect hook is best see you can use use effect hook for different purposes manipulating dom that's fine uh, causing side effects that's fine uh, but i think nowadays you should not use the use effect hook for data fetching I think there are many libraries uh, for example TamStack is one of the library which you can use i recommend using it instead of uh using the use effect hook because in my personal opinion it has caused a lot of trouble uh if you have uh if you are fetching data inside use effect hook i think it's not recommended uh it, it's not recommending anymore like you should use some different library which are made to uh to talk to your backend so yeah so don't use use effect for that or try to avoid use effect to do that if you have like a small application 
uh, might be fine but if you have anything big where you have like session management or you need to make connection to the back end and you have like back and forth communication then i would highly recommend not using use fact but using something like 10 stack query or uh, any popular library i personally use 10 stack so uh, i can speak about it uh, like unlike like manual caching with the use effect the 10 stack query automatically caches uh, the query results and i think it's it's more smarter that way than let uh, the specialized libraries do that you don't you don't need to do that use effect uh, or any other hook to do that so yeah i think that's it from today's uh, podcast uh, the very first episode uh, if you have any feedback regarding it please give it to me uh, i hope you learned something listening to things without having the capacity to show you the code it has some downside too but uh, it forces me to focus on things so that i can teach you and i can understand it as well i found uh, teaching is uh, the best way of learning as well so i learn a lot of things uh, while doing research like how these things work or from a personal opinion i want to share something uh, so yeah so that's it from today's podcast i'll meet you i don't know when uh, maybe soon i'll have uh, the next second po- uh, episode of the podcast with new interesting topic So that's it from today's episode. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Have a good day.